Hey everyone, Brian and Jeff with Wrenches and Rides, and today we are going to install the Assault Industries front gusset kit for a Can Am Maverick X3. This will work for an XRS, XDS, non turbo, turbo. It's meant for all of them, but we have a 2019 with a smart lock behind us, so we might have a little bit less space. Yeah, we got a lot less space with where the locker comes in at, we're not gonna be able to move bolts back and forth. We might be cutting bolts and replacing them with the hardware that comes in the kit. You don't have to, but they give you the hardware if needed. We're set here, man. We got everything that we need. We've kind of put it out on the table. We've gone through a little bit of uh, the machine behind us to say, what do we gotta do? Where does everything fit? But they give you a nice front brace that's here. It's got their Assault Racing logo in it. This is actually going to get bolted onto the front gusset of the machine. This creates the gusset of the front bulkhead of the machine. So this piece here is going to take six bolts. Not a big deal. Then we got the back piece. This is the upper rear control arm brace, double shear. And this is the lower rear control arm. Everything here is going to give you a double shear joint and the metal is nice. I mean, you got paper thin stuff back here. Yeah, it's just stamped metal where this is actually you know, almost an eighth inch here. This is true eighth inch, a lot stronger, plus you're getting the double shear. So if you got a Can-Am, this is definitely something you want to look at. So we're going to start into this. We're going to take off the front of the machine, the plastic, just so everyone can get a better look. We're gonna move the radiator out of the way. I think if you have a, there's ways around this, but if you have a smart lock, you need to do what we're doing. So just follow along, it's not gonna be difficult. So when removing the front plastic, you don't really need a lot of tools. You only need a T20, a T30, and a 10 millimeter wrench. So when you're starting this out, uh, we worked from the top kind of down. Uh, you're removing a couple screws that are right next to the gas tank inlets in the back and just move forward, taking everything out. You've got one T20 on each side, the lower portion of the headlight bucket. Once you take that screw out, make sure you pull the bucket loose from the radiator support, and the rest will come off. And then make sure you pull off all your lights. They're a simple connection, just pull them back. Uh, there's a little clip that you pull back and pull out. Very simple to do. I know it looks intimidating, but this front panel comes off Less than five minutes. Yeah. It's really quick. There are four bolts that you'll need a 10 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter wrench. You'll take them out and everything will kind of just sit there. At this point, we're gonna raise the machine up so that we can remove the shock tower mount on the top and the shocks off the bottom just to get them out of the way so we get more room. Removing the shocks is very simple. You just need an 18 millimeter socket and an 18 millimeter wrench. Getting the machine at the proper height here will make removing things a little bit easier. We're struggling with some of the bolts and lifting up the tires because our lift is set up and we have it just a little bit too high. Either way, this is not very hard. Just take your time, get your jack and hold the machine up very sturdy, but at the right height, everything will come out. And as you can see now, we have a ton of room that we can work on all this stuff and just dive into it. It's the little bit of prep work here is gonna make this so much easier to complete. We took a strap and connected it to the driver's side seat and just gently pulled the radiator out of some of the clamps that it has and moved it up and out of the way. Just be careful that you don't pinch anything or pull anything out, but this is a, a simple step to get everything out of the way and it gives you full access to the front. Here's where the smart lock comes into play. You have this large black box that's here. This bolt would normally slide out out of a unit without the smart lock, but this bolt is gonna end up getting cut along with these bottom two. If you didn't cut the bottom two, there is a piece that connects them together in the bottom and you'd have to remove the diff to get them out. So we're gonna cut the bottom two here, cut this bolt, and then slide this bolt out. We'll reuse new bolts that come with the kit. When you're pulling off the front bumper, make sure everything again is supported well because everything here being single shear, the bolts will move back and forth. 
It's a great time to remove both of the sway bar links. And if you're gonna upgrade them, it's also a wonderful time to put in some adjustable ones. We have some from Assault Industries that we're gonna put in after this, but remove those get the bar out of the way. And we're gonna start in on removing the nuts from the upper and lower A-arms that are towards the back of the machine. This will allow us to then start to pull the lower A-arms off. As we're removing the nuts off these control arms, you can see the paper thin braces that they have on the side to help stop any movement. But these braces are so thin, they don't really do much. And that's why we need to put this gusset kit in. We drilled out these two rivets to push this piece back, but we found underneath here that there is another rivet over here and another rivet there. To make this easier, we're just going to cut this bracket here and then be able to use a wrench to tighten these up. So this is all we cut out. You can see the hex heads just sit in there. So we'll be able to put a wrench on those bolts to get them tight again. Remove the two 10 millimeter bolts that are holding in the plate for the front lower A-arms. We're gonna remove them, push that back so we can get the bolts back and then we're just gonna pull the A-arms forward so we can get them to drop out. Put one of the 10 millimeter bolts back in to make that bracket rigid, and then you can cut those two bolts off. With the lower A-arms removed, we're going to now remove the upper A-arms. If you have a smart lock, the upper passenger side bolt might be a pain. Uh, you can work around it or you're going to have to cut it either way. Um, but if you have trouble with the steering rack in the back, if a bolt's hitting, just turn the steering wheel slightly one way or another and the bolts will come out. We found that you can use a 10 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter wrench, remove the bracing for the upper A-arm bolts, and you'll be able to get that bolt just past the smart lock with that removed. Replacing this is very important as it is a structural component. In the place of the two 10 millimeter bolts that were down here are going with 5 16 bolts that are gonna go through these two holes. So we have to drill this out to 21 64ths to allow them to go through. We'll bolt this in place and hold it up, mark the rest of them, and then drill the rest of the holes as we have two bolts that'll go through these braces and then also two bolts on top. This may vary on different machines, but you have to put your plate up and see where it might hit because this little relief hole has got a lip that's not allowing our gusset to sit flat. So we're gonna grind this little area down so our gusset sits flat between the top and the bottom. Cover any bare metal in a good paint and primer so it doesn't rust. These backing plates go in the bottom here and here. So they're going to help to stiffen this up when we bolt it together. There's two more bolts that go on this side. This bottom piece is going to be pretty tight. Top should be pretty simple.
Now we're going to install the rear upper control arm mount. If you do have the smart lock diff, make sure that the wiring that goes to it is not in the way of this going in and that it's clear from any abrasion. For alignment purposes, make sure that you install the control arm bolts before tightening up the smaller bolts for this bracket. To tighten up this brace, you're going to need a 17 millimeter socket and a 15 millimeter wrench. So at this point, <clears throat> we're going to install both upper A arms and you kind of have to use the tire to change the angle and slide each of them in. Again, two people really helps in this situation. Once you get them in, slide the new bolts through in the front, but you have to put your bumper or your front gusset or little front bumper on at this point. So what we did was just slide the bolts through. Now we're gonna bring in a bumper that we have we kind of customized one of the Assault Industries bumpers here to make it our own. The lower AR might be a little bit more of a struggle. We're going to put the brace kit in and we have the bolts pushed back. And then once the bolts are through and the AR's in place, we have another piece that hangs on the bottom that'll be pretty easy. But we have to get the front and the back in together. With that struggle over, you just slide the other brace over and we will tighten them up. Now you can move on to tightening the rear upper A-arm bolts. If you do have the smart lock in the back, there is a little bit of clearance to get a wrench in there, but it's going to be tight. Then you can move forward and tighten up both the upper and lower control arm bolts. Make sure if you have a bumper in there that your bolts are long enough. But other than that, this is pretty straightforward and we're starting to wrap this up and put it back together. Now we can put on the sway bar end links. Note on the 2019 model that they moved up to an M12 bolt. The 2000 17 and 18s had an M10 bolt. So if you do order different sway bar end links, make sure they are fitted for the 2019 model if you have it. Putting the shocks back on is simple with two people. You can help each other align things back up. But if you're doing it alone, just take your time and use the jack to raise and lower the machine to get the shocks in the perfect place to slide them in. Again, tighten this stuff up because it's going back together. And before you get too far here, it would be a great time to put some grease in those grease zerks because you're going to want to grease up those A-arms again after we've had them apart. You can reinstall your radiator in the factory position. We have a different bumper on the front of this, so we're gonna do a little more manipulating on that later, but make sure you put the four bolts in nice and tight, then you can move on to the body. Reinstalling the plastic is the same as taking it off. Make sure you get your headlights snapped into place and make sure you have all your wiring not pinched and in the correct place plugged in good. You can test things out afterwards. We're going to continue to do some more wiring on this machine and we have some tie rods to put on. So we're not securing the plastic down as we think we'll be pulling it off again soon. This wasn't that bad of an install. What no, not really. Once we got into it, it was pretty smooth. Yeah, there's a lot of nice pieces that you're putting together in this and you can tell that you're really adding a lot of strength to this machine in places where it had some very paper thin metal, which is it's disappointing when you think about how much money you put into this. It is. Once you actually get into tearing one of these down and seeing it for the first time. And if you're in any of the Facebook groups or anything like we are, uh, you'll watch people just run over things and their front end just gets demolished. 
in, in some cases we talked about adding uh, or maybe accentuating the weak points, that lower A-arm. And you might be, but when you bend that lower A-arm, at least you know you're not bending the bracketry that right. holds it on. It's a well needed upgrade. Uh, there's no doubt there. So thanks for sticking around watching us put this together. This was a nice two person thing. I think you can do it with one person, but it's definitely gonna be a lot more fun with like another person there and maybe a couple beers. Take your time, <laughs> have some fun. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Wrenches and Rides and look for us on social media. We appreciate your time. Have a great day.